Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly, yeah. How has uh, the training been going for this one? Uh, training was great. Um, you always hear fighters say it's the best camp ever, but uh, it was the best camp ever. Um, but it, it, it was difficult. We, we tweaked everything, just took it up a notch. You know, Each time we'll get close to my line of breaking, essentially. And uh, this one, it was going against the, the biggest, toughest opponents I've ever been with. Um, the conditioning was pushed up that extra little degree, so everything was dialed up that little bit more because last camp went perfectly well. Um, this one went swimmingly as well, but uh, we just dialed it up that extra little bit more, cranked it to 11 because we got a tough, uh, tough opponent in front of us. When, when fighters say, oh, this is the best camp I've ever had, is that just the case of you've been able to push your body as far as you can go without injury? Is that what that means? You know, I can look at what I did last camp and and what uh, and look at the numbers as look as well as look at what felt like my effort to achieve those numbers. And the effort last camp felt extremely high to get um, lower quality work in than I did this time. This time I came in with kind of just more energy this camp. I think that little bit of a break since since December got to uh, inject all the energy back in, into me and uh, this camp got kicked off to a good start. It was only the last last week of hard work really where it was like, okay, this feels like a slug through camp. Um, but then if you look at the guys I was going with, uh, sparring, everything, it, it, it was tougher, you know. So um, the difficulty was higher, but the, the effort felt lower. So uh, that's always nice. Uh, Nikolai, which uh, uh, we've seen him all over Instagram with Conor McGregor. He comes, he uh, helped Conor with some of his camp uh, last time. Um, I was wrestling with him, so we can imagine how it went. I showed one clip on my social media, me getting perfectly suplexed. Um, luckily, healthy. Next, I can look over my shoulder, so luckily, good. But uh, you know, he stepped up his game. He had his first. Uh, professional win uh, a couple months ago you know he's he's a real tough guy and then it's the same same household names but he was one key guy um, we brought in for this camp uh, to work with specifically because one he's a new face so there's new nerves in that sparring you get that fight uh, nerves in the gym um, but also he could push me in that wrestling uh, discipline where uh, Marab is uh, obviously strong in as well. This is your third time doing this, third fight in the UFC, third time doing all the pre-fight festivities. Is, is, is this a process that's starting to feel and it becomes familiar to you? You know, I don't know if it'll ever feel normal, but it feels, it feels. I, I guess it's regular enough. Um, it's exciting. I, 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 I love doing this. I get to stand in front of a group of microphones and with lights on me and feel important for, for once in my life. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's really cool. I love talking with you guys. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's something I look forward to fight week. Fight week, to me, um, is always exciting and always fills me with energy as opposed to be a big energy draw. You said it's uh, hard to imagine getting a finish against Marab, or at least hard to imagine getting a quick finish. So what is the key uh, for you here? The key is to stay on and sharp the entire fight. It's going to be like, it's going to be potentially a long 15 minutes. He pushes forward no matter how tired he is, no matter what he's been hit with. So we, so that wears on some fighters. Um, you, you can see it. Some of his past opponents, you know, they, they can't seem to stop the pressure that is uh, Marab. He, he puts on deadly pressure. And for me, it's not, you know, getting getting relaxed, getting comfortable in there where I could be caught with something um, more unorthodox that he throws because he does throw some wild shots. Talking about being comfortable, I mean, John is not in your corner for this, I believe. Uh, I think Craig is. Is there much of a difference? Does that play any factor for you at all? When we took this fight, we knew John wouldn't be able to make it. Uh, so that was always in our head. It wasn't some last minute change. So the preparation's been done weeks in advance you know uh we prepared for this we prepared for john not to be there but really this feels like one of those fights where the small little tidbits of advice your corner is going to give you isn't going to change the outcome if anything in my game gets exploited in this fight and we're not able to get the win um it's because we didn't do our work months ago it's not because of anything in the 15 minutes of advice that he could he could tell me um with that said i have the best corner i could ask for the second best corner i could ask for in curtis brigham my original coach um is here he was here for the toronto fight he was there for six of my professional fights before this you know he's been out there for all but one um and then i have a teammate kieran clark uh who's 
a phenomenal fighter in his own right. Um, so I have the familiarity of SBG as well as uh, my old coach giving me all the sound advice I, I, I'm used to throughout my career. Brad, you mentioned how tough Mirab is to finish. You were so close to finishing Matthew Lopez last time. Are you putting a little bit of pressure that, to get that first UFC finish? You know, you, you can't focus on the finish too much. You know, you could go out and chase the finish, but it's Marab in front of you. Like, let's that, get serious, guys. Good luck going out there and trying to finish him quick. You know, uh, if the opportunity presents itself, it's going to present itself, and I'm going to hop on it. Uh, with Matthew Lopez, the opportunity presents itself. I hopped on it. I hoped for the finish, but we didn't get it. But sometimes it takes, you know, a, a lot of the guys my past few fights have been that grindy, grindy type. Jay Cuccinello, I put him down twice. Couldn't get the finish. Uh, Matthew Lopez, I snuck on his back. Couldn't get the finish. Um, so I'd certainly like the finish. I want to get out there as fast as possible. But, you know, with, with certain fighters, you need to be prepared uh, for the long haul. Hi, now, Brad, sorry. You also mentioned that uh, you're enjoying kind of, you know, feeling important, you know, during fight week. You, I, I saw you tweet that you, uh, a radio station in Winnipeg gave you, like, a top 100 most fascinating people. In the world. <laughs> so, so, so how do you do that? What, make, what makes you so fascinating, Brad? I don't know what makes me so fascinated. I'm a pretty down-to-earth guy, and I fight in a cage. So um, maybe the bar in Manitoba wasn't the absolute highest, so I made it. Um, or maybe there's just something interesting about me. But I, I, it's up for you guys, it's up for the fans to think of something interesting about me. I'm just trying to be me, and uh, you know, if they find me fascinating, fantastic. Um, yeah, I, 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 I looked at it, I was like, I don't know why, guys, but... Uh, I made it on the list, so that's pretty cool. Maybe there's just 100 fascinating people from Manitoba. Exactly. Maybe there's just 100 fascinating people from Manitoba, and, you know, I, I came in at number 100. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. I, I made it on the list, and, yeah, it's, it's exciting. There's always pressure right now to be the next George St. Pierre. Everybody's waiting for that next Canadian uh, to really rise to the top. You're undefeated. You won the Ultimate Fighter on a season of undefeated uh, fighters. Yeah. Do you feel some sort of pressure to be that next great Canadian? I'd love to be that next great Canadian. Um, in terms of outside pressure, it doesn't really get to me too much. I, I, I put more pressure on myself than I think anybody could put on me. Um, I, I'd love to be uh, to lead Canadian MMA forward and help push it and, and help um, grow the sport here. I don't want to say regrow it because I know there's been a lot of talk about Canadian MMA and, and kind of the dark ages and stuff like that that, that we have worried. I'm not sure. There's exciting fights put on every couple of weeks in Canada, so it's hard to say. We have a Canadian filled card here in Ottawa, so it's hard to say Canadian MMA isn't doing well, but I definitely like to grow it um, because I love this sport and I, I'd like to see other Canadian, acts, other Canadian athletes shine as well. Back to back fights in Canada. Do you like fighting close to home, or is the 40 degrees weather in Vegas last summer more appealing? I love fighting at home. Um, when I came out, uh, in Toronto, I got quite the pop. I had a lot of local, local support, uh, a lot of national support. Um, so it's great to be fighting in front of a Canadian audience and, and in front of Canadian fans. It also allows me a chance to come back home. So um, anytime I can go back home, see friends and family, get that uh, energy back injected into you. You know, you go through a hard camp, go home, and it's exciting times. You know, it just leads to, well, so far, a pretty good recipe. You hear a lot of fighters talk about getting in the zone, right? Let, let the fans out there know, right before you hit the cage at the CTC, Canadian Tire Center, on a Saturday, how do you get in the zone? How do you get your mind right? You know, you go through a mental checklist in, in terms of what you have to bring that night, what abilities you have. And, and when you look at the facts, every time you walk out there, you know, you're checking almost all the boxes. Almost all the boxes that are checked are in your column. You know, are you in the best shape? Are, 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 are you, you know... Are you healthy? Are, was your weight on point? Are you refueled, re-energized? Is your jiu-jitsu sound? Is your wrestling sound? Is your strength? All those things, you know, you start checking those boxes and you're like, you know what, I, I, everything's checked in my favor, you know? So I go through that, I get my warm-up in, and, and, and after this long, you know, you're still trying to refine it as much as possible, but we found a pretty good recipe that translates into uh, my best performance on fight night. Let's do a song. Let's do a song. Music? Before you go on? You know, a lot of guys like to get hyped up before going out there. Um, I'm going to go fight somebody. If I'm not hyped up, you know, uh, something's wrong with me. Maybe something is wrong with me already. But, you know, uh, I like just something that kind of centers me and refocuses me. So I, I like Oats in the Water by Ben Howard. Um, 
kind of an eerie tune, but uh, that just helps kind of focus me, bring me into that zone, and uh, it translates. You were featured on Sports Center yesterday. Did you get any messages about that? I got quite a few messages about being on Sports Center. Uh, I've watched the piece itself. I thought it's pretty cool. Anytime there's videos on me, um, especially from people like TSN, ESPN, Fox, a any avenue itself, uh, I find it extremely exciting. Um, I'm. It just feels like I'm, I'm strapped in for quite a ride uh, in in this UFC uh, run I'm going to make. So uh, I'm just trying to enjoy every moment, just like this. Going, going through the Ultimate Fighter and then through these process of your last three fights, what is it that you have learned? And like you said, getting used to it, and you're strapped in. What is it that you're picking up that you're like, you know what, I can do this better, even though you're still undefeated. You know, there's some changes, for example, um, fight week in Vegas that I thought, uh, just some extra comfort. So uh, one thing missing fight week uh, for the Ultimate Fighter was uh, I have my girlfriend there, Katie Saul. Um, she's a fighter herself, and, and she really, um, she understands fight week and understands the pressures that it brings. So, you know, for Toronto, I had her. For this fight, I have her. Um, so little things like that, just little mental things where you're starting to feel maybe, you know, even though you have your team, though, you're missing those comforts of, of home and routine. So stuff like that. Um, and then it's just enjoying it. I enjoyed um, International Fight Week when I did the Ultimate Fighter finale. Um, and I'm trying to keep that. I'm trying to keep that excitement. Um, I don't think it'll ever get old. But if it ever does, try to remember when I didn't have it and make sure that I just enjoy the process. You bring up understanding the Sorry, pressure. Sorry, guys, we have to go with these guys. Thanks, Thanks, so much. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Thank you, Brett.